Welcome back, team. I've been really excited to get together and look at our data. Byron, you looks like you've gathered the data and put it together in a chart. Do you want to go ahead and explain that? Yeah, and thanks for everybody getting it to me on time so I could get that done before we got to the meeting. Um, you'll notice on the first column we have the number of students taking the test. So, Jill, you had 28 students, um, Roseanne 27, and I have 29 mm -hmm. that took the test. Um, the number of students who were above 80%, which was the proficiency rating that we chose. Mm -hmm. So, Jill, you had 22 Ooh, students that were above 80%. That. Um, Roseanne, you had 18, and I had 21. Mm -hmm. The next piece just puts it into a percentage. So the nice thing is, Jill, you're only 1% away from our goal 80. of 80%. So yeah, yeah. 80% of mean, the that, kids. That's it's like congratulations. You're, yeah, right where you need to be. Um, Roseanne, you're at 67 and I'm at 72, so we still have some work to do. Mm -hmm. Then in the next column is the number of students that are between 60 and 80%. Um, Jill, you have four, and then Roseanne and I both have six that fall in that column. And then the last column is the number of students below 60%. Jill, you have two, Roseanne three, and I have two. You know, even though we didn't get all of our kids to mastery, I feel so good about that because remember when we did our benchmark assessment when we first chose this, we only had 11% of the students combined yes. at proficiency. Yes. So to yes. move that many to almost 80%, is, I yeah. think we should feel really good about that and celebrate that. I agree. That is a celebration. Definitely. Let's see what we can do with our students who are between 60 and 80% proficient first. Okay. If we look at those students and look, about, look and see what strengths and weaknesses that they had as, on their assessment. Okay. okay. And I tried to put just a, a quick visual based representation within models and the part to whole concept mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that are in the standards. So based on that we broke it out for the 60 to 80 percent group and that might guide us a little bit in our discussion. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. A lot of my kids that fell in that group would invert it. So mm -hmm. they'd I write four too. eights and then mm -hmm. just flip it so now it's Eight fours. Eight fours. Right. So I your had kids, kids were doing, doing the same that too. Thing. Mm -hmm. I found a strength that they had though. It seemed that most all of our kids could write a fraction and then represent it as a model or match the number fraction to the model. It seemed like they had that down really well. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed with mine, they, they, did, they were able to do that, but when I asked them to kind of go to that next step where they had to create it and apply it and apply it in that's where I've fallen short so yeah, and I too. think question two really addresses that applying if we can maybe yeah, look at that look question at that. and see if that really tested what we wanted it to test so they were supposed to pick out three fractions that were equivalent to one half and draw a model to prove their answer mm -hmm. We used a number line as a reference point, but I wonder if that really assessed what we wanted it to. Because part of standard 3A was to understand two fractions, equivalent fractions, on a number line, and we only used it as a reference. Do you think we could adjust that question for next year? Yeah, I, I think we need to. Yeah, it, it did not test what we expected it to test. Mm -hmm. I don't think we got the information we wanted from that, so. Well, I was thinking if we were to turn it all into number lines and just do a quick reassessment once I've done some reteaching in small group with these kids that are still struggling as maybe like an exit card, mm -hmm. um, then I, it would be a way for us to see if they do better when mm -hmm. it's all number line to number line. And, and then we could adjust mm -hmm. this for next year when we when we give this standard again. So, like if our, so if our exit cards were just number lines or just models, then we'd have a better idea of what they're not understanding. Yeah. Yeah. So what strategies do you think we could use as we look at our 60 to 80 percent students that would help them understand this better? Well, the, the question I have is, seeing you're at 79 percent, I mean, you barely missed our end goal already. I'd kind of like to hear what strategies you've been using in the classroom for this unit that may be different than what I'm doing. Well, I don't know, I'll just share some of the things that we did as a class. Okay. One thing that we did, we used um, fraction models. We used the circle manipulatives as well as the bar model 
manipulatives and I had the kids stack the model, the manipulatives on top of each other, the fraction model, and so as they did that they could see is one half really equivalent to two fourths. And then taking into account that I have some ELL students, then they turned and they talked with each other and shared their strategies because I felt like that oral language could help those students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we do as a class that I just started with in the last few months but I've seen pretty good results with is the kids are keeping a math journal. Mm -hmm. And so in their math journal they write down what they're doing and their understanding but also they draw things and so they've been drawing bar models in their math journals. I think I need to come take that, a look at new, that because yeah. I don't think I'm using my math journals effectively. Could, would you mind if I came and took you, a look at what you're doing? You're welcome to come oh, because be they actually diagram and write examples as well as writing their understanding, definitions, vocabulary, all of that is included in the math journal. That's mm -hmm. good. Well, let's give this a try, uh, at least with this group. And okay. when are we going to um, take a look at how they're doing with these exit cards then? Would three days be enough mm -hmm. time? Yeah, I, I yeah. think we built in a three-day um, buffer, buffer mm -hmm. where we could reteach and address things that we needed to um, before we were scheduled on the curriculum app to start the next unit. Mm -hmm.